Good afternoon and welcome back. So glad you've joined us today for DI Live's SolidWorks Tips and Tricks, another round of SolidWorks Sketch Tips and Tricks. We invite you to stick around after today's presentation for a live Q&A. We'll get started momentarily as we're waiting a couple minutes for others to join us. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Without further ado, I'd like to hand things over to Chris Dubuque, Managing Application Engineer at CATI. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today for my DI Live presentation. Uh, my name is Chris Dubuque, I'm one of the application engineers with Computer Aided Technology. I am coming to you from our Portland, Oregon office. I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes or so talking a little bit about some SolidWorks sketch tips and tricks. So before I get into the content, I just want to pose a simple question. What do you consider a tip or trick for SolidWorks? Some things that come to mind for me, you know, maybe it's a keyboard shortcut. That's a pretty obvious one. Maybe you prefer mouse gestures. You know, there's a lot of different ways to interact with the software. Maybe it's those really slick ways of, of using the software that makes you look like a SolidWorks hero. Of course, those always qualify. Possibly lesser known or some newer commands. You know, every new release of SolidWorks have, has tons of functionality. So uh, keep up on that by taking a peek at the what's new guide with all releases. Maybe it's a little bit of everything. Maybe it's some bullet points I don't have here. I mean, when it's uh, all said and done, a tip or a trick to one person is common knowledge to someone else in my experience. So possibly just about anything could be considered a, a tip or a trick when using SolidWorks. One of the things that I like to keep in mind, or at least that I consider is a tip or a trick is anything that helps you be more efficient. Maybe it's standard functionality. Maybe it is one of those slick ways. Maybe it's a shortcut. Who knows? But if it saves you some time, um, in my opinion, that's what I qualify as a tip or a trick. So today's agenda, we're going to start things off with just a handful of best practices, go over some review of sketch mechanics, kind of the basics and the building blocks to continue for today. I will touch on a handful of keyboard shortcuts, and you'll see me use these shortcuts when I get into some SOLIDWORKS examples later on. I'll go through an example of some tips for adding sketch relations, some important stuff there. Of course, some tips for dimensioning. If you have relations, you've got to have your dimensions in there, so we'll cover both of those. And then I'll show a few examples of maybe some sketch tools or some techniques that you might not be aware of. And to wrap things up, I will go through some 3D sketch tips and tricks. 
So we'll start with the basics, kind of end with the advanced, and hopefully today uh, you can take something back to the office and, and just help make your life a little bit easier using SOLIDWORKS. So let's talk briefly about a few best practices. And first and foremost, design intent. Your plan on how the model should behave when you change it. I know that I tend to get in a hurry. Sometimes I build sketches with very poor design intent, and that makes those changes very difficult. So always think about your design intent, always have that plan. And I'm not saying ponder design intent for hours before you build a sketch, but just try to think about, you know, what should happen when I change this particular dimension, for example. The other thing I want to emphasize, and it really goes hand in hand with design intent, is really leverage those primary planes. Um, dimension off of them, of course, add your relations to them, sketch off of them, build new reference planes after them, and build following geometry off those reference planes. We all know what happens in SOLIDWORKS if we add dimensions in a sketch to an edge of a fillet, and then we delete those fillets, since fillets tend to come and go. Well, of course, you're going to get dangling dimensions and relations. So if we just really get in that habit of always using these reference planes, they will never leave the model. So we're going to have, again, that more robust uh, sketch, more robust design intent. Take advantage of construction geometry. I like to say that uh, construction geometry is cheap. Create your construction geometry, dimension to it, relate to it, you know, mirror off of it, whatever it is that you need to do. And I'll add to that by saying any sketch entity can be construction, not just the center line because it has a dedicated button, as we'll see um, you know, a little bit later possibly. Anything can be construction geometry. Keep your sketches simple. Simple sketches, they're easy to understand. They're easy to share. Uh, they rebuild quicker. More complex sketches, well, they're hard to understand. You could have hundreds of entities, several hundred relations. Uh, it's going to be a little bit slower to solve. You have a higher possibility of adding that one relation that tips it over the edge and the sketch goes over to find or cannot solve. So keep them simple. It's just the uh, you know, best situation all around in my experience. And when you're ready, fully define your sketches. Uh, sketch always seems to move at the absolute least opportune time. So add your dimensions and relations to fully define the sketch, or maybe better yet, use the fully defined sketch command. You know, lock down what you need with uh, your dimensions initially, but then when you're ready to release the part, fully define it just to make sure that nothing is going to move. And another thing that I like to recommend, rename your important sketches. And I'm not suggesting you rename every single dimension feature sketch in the manager tree, just the critical sketches. From experience, I've accidentally deleted very important sketches and of course causes the tree to blow up. Thankfully, I can undo back to safety. But if you re rename those sketches, it's just going to lessen the chance of that happening. So moving on here, let's get into some of the review of kind of the mechanics of using sketches, starting with what I like to call the relations cheat sheet. Um, these are just icons I created that blow up the little tiny on-screen display that you'll see of all of your sketch relations. Find it useful. Used to have this printed off, put up on the, uh, the wall of my, uh, my office. You know, finally got these memorized after so many years. But again, just something to come back to. Just helps us understand the difference between coincidence, midpoint, intersection. They can all look uh, fairly similar on a little tiny monitor, for example. What about just driving the mouse? Of course, there's the kind of de facto standard way of click, click, click to build a chain of entities that you can see on the screen. Um, but don't forget, there's still the classic and actually the original way that I used to learn SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and that was the click, hold down the left mouse button and drag to create a single entity. So kind of long forgotten, but still very valid way of building the entities. And finally, wake up those inference lines. Hesitate your mouse over existing geometry. You'll see those dashed inference lines pop up on the screen. Of course, follow those inference lines and you can add those extra relations such as this parallel on the fly. Again, it's all about saving, saving time, saving steps in some of these little tips. So I told you the best practices and review would be quick. Uh, let's, let's keep on moving forward here and talk about a couple of keyboard shortcuts you'll see me use later on. So first thing, the S key, I think it's the greatest thing ever, and I do understand that is only my opinion, one person's opinion, and not everybody may agree. 
Um, but it's just a nice way to, to get your commands right at the mouse uh, without having to move all throughout the UI. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of customizing it or anything like that, but I just want to bring it up. You'll see me use that in a moment. Uh, a complementary hotkey is the D key. That brings the confirmation corner or the accept and cancel commands right to the mouse. Again, it's all about eliminating that, that mouse movement throughout the UI. And then what you see animating there, the good classic, the letter A to auto transition between lines and arcs while uh, actively creating sketches. You can also use a mouse gesture. And what I mean by that is instead of clicking A, just move the mouse off the end of the line back to the end of the line. And then when you move the mouse out that second time, it's going to switch over to an arc for you. In my opinion, another great uh, hotkey is holding down the control key to disable automatic relations. So there you can see the default functionality. Those relations pop up, hold down the control, shuts it off, let go of the control. Those yellow icons for relations come back on. So works really well in those situations where you need to create two entities very, very close together, yet SolidWorks always wants to add that automatic relation. Control shuts it off temporarily, and then you can place that geometry wherever you need it to go. So let's get into an example using SOLIDWORKS and talk about some relation tips. So I want to just emphasize being able to add them with one click. I want to talk about a new, a new relation called torsional continuity. And then maybe something that isn't specifically sketch relations, or excuse me, sketch relation tips, but I find useful. And that is feature favorites, or in this example, you'll see sketch favorites. So let's jump into SOLIDWORKS here. I'm going to go ahead and leverage my recent documents and open up a model. And this model, you know, it's got a few issues with it, and we need to fix it. To highlight those issues, I'll turn on the zebra stripes. And on this selected edge, you can see the stripes don't add up, so there's a bit of a discontinuity or an edge that I really don't want on the model. So as I go to the Feature Manager tree, uh, this first sketch, that's the base sketch, it's the most important feature in the tree in my opinion. So I'm going to right click on it and use Add to Favorites. Now any feature in the tree can be added as a favorite and once it is, you'll see it's hiding right at the top of the tree. Expand that Favorites folder, just makes it really easy to get to anything that you find critically important. So as I change the view, the sketch contains of an arc and a spline, and I've got their curvature combs turned on to show that kind of discontinuity, that break. So by selecting just that single point, SOLIDWORKS will automatically select the arc and the spline, or those two adjacent entities, and in the pop-up toolbar, give us the relationships that are applicable. Let's try make tangent, and it does clean it up a little bit, but there's still a bit of a stair step in there. So it's not quite smooth enough. So maybe we try curvature continuity. Well, this looks a little bit better, but now instead of a stair step, there's a pretty gradual or uh, maybe abrupt ramp, depending on how you want to look at it. So this newer relation I want to highlight here, torsional continuity or G3, one click, super, super smooth. So it's controlling the rate of change of curvature. So this is one of those tips that kind of falls under the category of take a peek of that what's new guide. Make sure you're using all the latest and greatest tools we have in SOLIDWORKS. So one click to add the relation, one click to G3 continuity, and there you can see how smooth it is. So really just speeds that process up by using that, that latest relation that we have inside of SOLIDWORKS. So now let's go from relations and talk briefly about some dimensioning tips. So a couple tips that I always like to talk about, and yeah, these are maybe some classics if you want to refer to them that way, are dimensioning to the tangencies of arcs. I tend to get this question quite a bit. I will say shift is the key to success there. And another dimension I always get questions of are uh, that doubled value represented on screen there by that 150 millimeter dimension. So as we jump back into SOLIDWORKS, let's go through this example of how we can add these types of dimensions on the fly. So I'll just start with a new part in this case. Open the part up and create a sketch on the front plane. And I'm going to leverage some construction geometry, in this case a center line, and create a vertical center line and then a horizontal center line. And then using the shortcut toolbar, switch over to a center point, uh, 
center point straight slot, excuse me. Nice thing about this is it behaves just like a, clerk, a circle. One click for the center, drag the slot out, and then we can go ahead and begin our dimensioning. But this is where I want to slow the progress down and really emphasize holding down the shift key at this point, left clicking on the arc on the left, moving the mouse over, kind of pausing to make sure you get the cursor feedback and it shows you the correct dimension type. And I also want to say I am still holding down the shift key at this point. Click the mouse a second time and there you can see that outer tangent to outer tangent dimension. So quickly, I'll just grab these two lines and put in a uh, maybe 20 millimeter dimension. And now let's dimension from the outer tangency of the arc on the right. So again, we'll slow down here, hold down the shift key, click on that right side arc, and click on the center line. Now this is a very important step in this dimension because you must select a center line within the active sketch. So once I click on it, we'll have the dimension between the line and the arc tangency, roughly 60 millimeters. But once I move the mouse to the far side or the other side of the center line, notice that value doubles. So that's the trick, that's the tip to this. You must dimension to a center line in the active sketch, move the mouse to the far side. So once we place that dimension, key in 120 millimeters, and at this point we're good to go. We'll select that center line, grab our feature, revolve the boss, and we'll move on with creating this particular design. One last thing I would like to mention is that when you revolve a feature with one of these doubled dimensions, SOLIDWORKS automatically puts a diameter symbol in there. So it's kind of a, a hidden tip. You might not even have noticed it, but there you can see we're ready to move forward. So we'll go ahead and we'll close this down and switch back over to the presentation. So shift is the key. To double that value, you may need to add a center line to your sketch. That's fairly common in my experience. And watch the feedback. So that's both with holding down the shift key, dimensioning to the arc tangencies, but also dimensioning to the center line. Watch the feedback moving the mouse from one side of that center line to another side. A few other dimension tips I'd like to mention are dimensioning to virtual sharps are actually how do these virtual sharps pop up in our sketches? And that's what I have represented on screen there with those uh, three orange arrows, those kind of extended graphics on there. Those represent the various intersecting lines. So I'll look at the differences between the automatic virtual sharps and then the manual virtual sharps here. So back over to SOLIDWORKS, using my recent documents key here, let's open up this particular sketch file. Now we'll go in and we'll edit sketch number one. And the first example I want to talk about are these automatic virtual sharps. But first, let's turn off the relation callouts. So here we can see virtual sharp one, virtual sharp two. And the key to an automatic virtual sharp is to first create the dimensions, fully define the geometry. So we're going to dimension vertex to virtual sharp, create that 45 millimeter dimension, and that right hand vertex is now defined. So when I add something like a sketch fillet, and I specify a radius maybe five millimeters, there's a great option. Thankfully, it's on by default right below it called Keep Constrained Corners. And this is what will create those automatic virtual sharps when we add our dimensions, or excuse me, when we add our fillets here. But the important thing is that dimension must be created first. So when we say OK to this, notice what happens. Of course, the sketch geometry is trimmed back, and we have a fillet. But now we have that virtual sharp, and we have the 45 millimeter dimension still attached. So let's, let's back up a little bit, because maybe we didn't create the dimensions first. Maybe we created the fillet first. So let's add the fillet first, and keep constrained corners does nothing for us because there is no dimension. So let's go ahead and hold down the control key, select the two lines, the horizontal line, the angle line, and then click the sketch point command. And this is how we manually create a virtual sharp. Once we click sketch point, we'll see that same type of graphic, those uh, intersecting lines. Now we can use our dimension command and we'll go from virtual sharp to virtual sharp. And we can maintain that design intent of 45 millimeters, just doing it a little bit differently. So the order of operations is important in this case. 
The last example I want to show you, I think, falls under the category of those, those slick ways of doing anything. So let me go ahead and just undo a couple of steps, and we'll start this off by first selecting a dimension. Then we'll right-click on the angled line and choose the Find Intersection option. We'll now select the horizontal line. SolidWorks will create and select that virtual sharp point. So all we need to do is create the second reference for the dimension. So really nice, smooth workflow to generate that third example of a virtual sharp. So there you have it. A couple of different ways of, of working with virtual sharps, automatic versus manual, really comes down to the uh, order of operations. Final tip with virtual sharps is you can use them in your drawings. They work the same way. You can right click on model edges, do that select or a find intersection. You can control key model edges at a point. It really comes down to how you like to use the software. So what about a couple of sketch tool uh, tips and tricks? The first one I want to mention, generic splines. So these were added a couple of releases ago. They make it super easy to modify any type of converted or offset spline or where the result of a convert entities or offset entities is a spline. So let's jump back into SolidWorks here real quick and take a look at this. Again, I'm going to use my recent documents and just pull up the files that I want to work with. In this case, this guitar body example. And the first thing I want to do is just create an offset plane from the front plane. So I'll hold down the control key, drag the front plane off, and maybe key in a five inch dimension or something like that. Select plane number two, insert a new sketch, and then select the existing spline and use convert entities to project it onto sketch two. Now, as expected, this spline is fully defined because of the on edge relation. Now we can delete that relation and then left click and drag this spline all over the place. But that's not really what I want to do. I want to change the shape of the spline. Well, if we take a look at the property manager, notice it says generic spline. So SolidWorks has just done this automatically. And if we move down to the bottom where the options are, the key to this command is the show control polygon, or I should say feature, not necessarily command. Once I turn on the control polygons, we can manipulate the spline as if we natively created it. So very easy, drag those points around, change the shape of the spline. But we can undo those changes and maybe we want to look at some of the available options. Notice we can right click, convert it to a style spline. If you prefer to use a style spline, it'll convert it with an approximation. So we'll say yes to that. And now we have the control vertices to drag and manipulate the style spline as we see fit. Again, I'll undo. Let's right click on the spline and we can look at some other options. For example, convert to a standard B spline or kind of the old spline inside of SolidWorks. And once we convert it to a regular spline, we'll have all of our tangency, magnitude, and direction arrows that we can manipulate all of our spline points, the control uh, vertices. Really, there's any type of editing we can do. So there's nothing we needed to do. It's just a new element or a new entity type that we have inside of SolidWorks. Really, really easy to convert and work with that, the result of that. So another similar uh, function that's been in SolidWorks for a long time, the old simplify spline command, it's still there. In my opinion, I find these generic splines just a bit more easy to work with. Now, some other tools that, that can be useful from time to time are merging and splitting our sketch entities. So you can merge two lines by adding a collinear relationship and then deleting their common endpoint. You can do the same thing with arcs by adding in a co-radial relation. But I will admit that these are just a setup to introduce that you can do the same with splines by adding in a curvature continuous relationship and then deleting that common endpoint. But that is all just a setup to talk about the split entities command. And that is simply take one segment, split it two, three, four, however many times you need. So let's jump into SolidWorks and kind of go through a couple of these examples. So we'll start a new part again. And we'll open up my part in millimeters template, put a sketch on the front plane here. And real simple sketch, it's just going to be a couple of lines to show this example. So maybe a vertical line and some line up at a random angle. 
we'll select that common uh, vertex and we'll say make collinear. Of course, the lines go collinear, but now we can take that common point and now delete it with the delete key and it's merged into a single line. So kind of a clever way of working. Let's look at an example of arcs using a three point arc. So click one, two and click three there. And from the end of arc one, we'll generate arc number two. Everything looks good. Select that common point and we'll say make co-radial. So they'll share the same radius and center point. Looks like a circle. And if we delete one of the points, it now is a circle. But where I really use this, where I put this workflow into practice is sketching splines. So it's pretty easy to accidentally jump out of a spline and then need to start a new spline from the end of the previous, but they don't have that same flow, that same continuity. So we can add it back in there by, again, selecting that common endpoint that was clear back from the relation tip earlier, add the curvature continuous relation, everything gets nice and smooth, and now we can delete that point and we're left with one continuous spline. We can also delete the spline point that was added so that gives us back to that kind of natural spline we would have created the first time. So very easy to go to and from. And if we need to split it, right click on the entity, sketch tools, split entities. This command's a little bit hidden in the right click menu, but as you'll see when we select it, just simply left click on the spline and our continuous spline is now broken into two entities left and right. Because it's hidden, I have added this to my shortcut toolbar. So there we can see the split entities command. So we'll go ahead and click once and click twice to split our arc, or excuse me, our circle into an arc. So things are looking pretty good there. So pretty easy to go from merging entities to splitting entities. It's a very, very flexible, very flexible workflow there. And a little bonus command here. Don't forget about the sketch segments command. It can really automate adding points on entities or splitting entities for you. So we're done with the 2D tips and tricks. Let's talk a little bit about some 3D sketching tips and tricks here. So the first thing I will say is I know that 3D sketches are everyone's favorite. We all love to use 3D sketches. We use them constantly. All right, maybe that's not entirely true. Maybe you hardly ever use 3D sketches, and if you're like me, you find them a little intimidating. So hopefully what I can do is just, you know, make them a little bit easier to understand. So the first key to a 3D sketch is to use tab. So tab will temporarily adjust the X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X planes we're sketching in. You can split the viewport from one main viewport to four independent viewports. And there's also a really nice tool called the Sketch Triad. And you can turn that on and it makes it easy to manipulate a sketch in the X, Y, or Z directions. So let's jump into SolidWorks again. Let me go ahead and start up and make a brand new sketch. And instead of putting a 2D sketch in this one, of course, I'm going to launch a 3D sketch. So I'll turn on uh, my shortcut toolbar here and let's create a center line. So I want to kind of walk through what's, what's going to happen. First, you can see the XY next to my sketch pencil. And you can see that when I start to hit the tab key, it's going to change. So now we're in the XY sketching plane, tab, the YZ sketching plane, tab again, the ZX sketching plane. So that tab just cycles you one to the other. So I'll tab over to XY, click at the origin, and go ahead and create my first line. Now we don't have horizontals to work with, so we really need to watch our cursor feedback to make sure we're going along X, along Y, things like that. But now I need to go uh, outside of the XY plane, so I'll hit tab here, and this allows me to go and create a sketch along the Z direction. I need to go back into the XY plane, so we'll tab over to at least the, the ZX plane so I can get the X direction. Now I'll tab into XY, looking pretty good click the mouse, and it looks like I'm going to need to tab one more time so I can go in the Z direction back towards my origin. So there's my sketch. Nothing super fancy at this point, but I do realize I accidentally created the entire sketch of construction geometry. So let's go ahead and fix that here. And I'll just control select these uh, one, two, three, four lines and use the pop-up toolbar to convert them from construction 
back over to solid geometry. And then to add a relation here, let's drag and drop the endpoint. Ah, but I always forget, old habits die hard. You cannot drag and drop to add relations in 3D sketches, so I'll control select and just merge those points. So don't forget that tip, you can't drag and drop to add your relations on a fly. So now as we just simply drag the sketch around, you can see they're actually pretty easy to work with. They do behave a lot better than they used to in SOLIDWORKS. But one thing that I find very, very useful is window pull down menu, viewport, and for view. So when we go into this for view orientation, we only drag in the uh, 2D orientations for the, the front. Here we can see the top. There's no in and out movement. It's only 2D kind of planar movements and then the left view as well. But in the trimetric view, we still have that full 3D uh, manipulation of that particular sketch vertex I'm working on. So it really simplifies how we work with the sketch. So I'll just flip it back over to the single view environment again. Another tool that can be really useful for manipulating a sketch is to right click on a vertex and use the sketch triad. So now we can select the various axes and only move in one direction or grab the web and move in one plane at a time. So it helps us by eliminating that third, uh, you know, that third direction. We can show the sketch triad on this vertex doesn't work by grabbing the point. How about I grab one of the axes? Again, it just makes it that much easier to work with. So the last tip I have for 3D sketches here, adding some dimensions. So dimensioning a single line, very easy. It's in the, uh, the Z direction, so we can easily key that in. But what about a dimension across the part in X, Y, and Z between these two vertices? Initially, it's just a linear distance, but this is where the tab key helps as well. So I can tab over one time here and it'll give me an X dimension. There you can see that. I'll tab one more time and move the mouse and it'll update to a Y dimension. Tab again over to Z, which is a bit redundant. So let's tab over, get that Y dimension, place that dimension, and we'll key in, I think, something like maybe 20 millimeters and it looks good. So tab is important while sketching. Tab key is also important while dimensioning, as you see here. So very quickly, you know, hopefully a few things that can make those a bit easier. But what about extruding a 3D sketch? Did you know you can do that inside of SOLIDWORKS? Well, yes, you can, but you must create a direction vector. So let's take a look at this simple little example as well. So I'll start a new 3D sketch. I guess I could have kept my other one open. And before I go any further and create any geometry, I'm going to double click on the top plane. And what that's going to do is lock us into a temporary 2D sketch within the 3D sketch. So kind of an interesting way of working. So now I can sketch something like, I don't know, a spline. And as I just click my way through my points, I am locked within that temporary 2D sketch plane. The relation on plane does not allow it to move even if I try to use it with the show sketch or triad. There you can see nothing's going to happen. But I can free this sketch up by simply selecting the spline and over in the property manager I'll just right click and delete that particular relation. Now notice my sketch spline is kind of light blue so I'm going to double click and that will essentially release the sketch out of that plane or kind of deactivate that plane. Now I can use the sketch triad to drag the, the vertex on the, the left. Let's right click and then move it over to the sketch point, the vertex on the right, and kind of build a, a saddle shape or you know, a potato chip shape, however you want to phrase it. Let's exit out of this sketch using the D key. And now I need to create one more sketch. And I think I'll put that, uh, I don't know, not the top plane, how about the front plane? And this is going to be a simple line. And this is a direction vector to control the extruded boss. So this sketch is very, very important. And even though I'm using it in a 3D sketch, you can do this exact same workflow with a regular 2D sketch. So now I have two sketches, the 3D and the 2D. We'll go ahead and we'll grab the extruded boss from my shortcut toolbar, select the 3D sketch, and now below the end condition dropdown, we have the direction of extrusion window. And we can click that line, and that's going to give us that direction vector. And now we can drag it out just like any extruded boss. 
So there you have it. Using a direction vector does allow you to create an extrusion from a 3D sketch. Might not use it uh, continuously, but it can be interesting and useful from time to time. Like I mentioned earlier, hopefully I've given you a couple of tips to where uh, 3D sketches aren't you know, nearly as intimidating as they, they can be. Maybe they can one day be your favorite, but I do want to emphasize just practice, practice, practice. Get used to that tab key. Get used to the sketch triad, some of these other things that you can do with your 3D sketches. So that really wraps us up. I thank you so much for your attendance. I really appreciate everyone showing up. I love doing these webcasts. I love getting feedback. So if you have any ideas, questions, comments, concerns, whatever it is, send me an email. Um, and with that, I'm going to sign off, say thank you very much, and everyone have a great day.